This tutorial will cover the sketching functions in TopoDroid. See Part 1 in this series for details on the DistoX menu functions, and see Part 2 for survey data functions. Links to these companion videos can be found in the description below. Before starting a sketch from within the survey data menu, you should customize the sketch tools palette, which is accessed from the main menu. Within the palette menu are three types of drawing tools, points, lines, and areas. There are nearly 80 drawing elements to choose from, which can be a lot to navigate. You should go through these lists and select only the tools you're likely to need, which will simplify the options and speed up the sketching process. Also, before you start sketching, you should open Options, go to Settings, and near the bottom open Sketching. There are numerous general settings as well as settings for points, lines, and the sketch canvas. It's worth taking a little time to customize these settings before you begin. One of the big advantages of Digital Sketch is that the tablet or phone takes survey shot data directly from a paired DistoX and draws the scaled line plot for you. This eliminates any errors and allows you to focus more time on sketching passage details. Another big advantage of Digital Sketch over paper is the ability to shoot multiple splay shots from each station in order to better define passages or rooms. Traditionally, left, right, up, and down measurements are taken, and these provide a framework for drawing the walls in a plan view or the ceiling and floor in a profile view. With the Disto X, you aren't limited to just these four measurements. You can take an almost unlimited number of splay shots along the length of a passage or around the perimeter of a room to better define the boundaries. Each of these splay shots can be quickly displayed on the digital sketch page, and drawing the walls, ceiling, and floor can be as simple as connecting the dots. This is especially helpful in very large areas where estimating passage or room dimensions may be less accurate. It helps to give the instrument person clear instructions on how to take these splays and in what order. The usual process is to begin with a triple shot to the next station. I usually then get a back sight from the point person using a separate instrument and verify it's within tolerance. Then the front sight person can travel to the next station and begin collecting splays. For large areas, I like to have at least three splays along each wall and along the ceiling and floor. These can be roughly halfway between the previous and current station, at the current station, and halfway to the next station. If there are significant changes in direction of the passage, or changes in ceiling or floor height, then additional splays may be added. For small passages, I typically just stick with traditional left, right, up, and down at the station, and I can easily estimate passage shape and dimensions without additional splays. To begin or continue a sketch, tap the sketch icon from within the survey shot list menu, which is the fourth button from the left. A window pops open with a list of existing sketches in two columns, one for plan and the other for profile. There is also a button to begin a new sketch. You can name the sketch pages and designate the starting station. If you leave the profile box checked, then a second sketch page will be created, but sometimes multiple plan views are needed in a survey where there is a vertical complexity, but often the entire survey can be drawn on a single profile page. So when a new plan sketch is created, the creation of an additional profile sketch is optional. The sketch page canvas has several buttons at the top that are either green or blue. The green buttons are for selecting one of four modes, whereas the blue buttons are context-dependent tools. Move mode is the default when none of the green buttons is selected. From this mode you can tap and drag and pinch and zoom. Blue buttons at the top of the page include the down arrow for downloading new shot data from a pair Disto X, and a Bluetooth button for resetting the connection. The next button selects what will be displayed on the canvas, and next to that is access to the survey notes. The white page with a down arrow switches to the Profile View sketch page. A similar button is available in the Profile View for switching back to Plan. Both the Plan and Profile sketch pages have the same modes and tools. Finally, the circle with the right arrow opens a window for adjusting the extended profile orientation options. Tapping the green pencil will highlight this button and puts you in drawing mode. The blue arrows are Undo and Redo buttons. The cup with brush and pencil opens the Drawing Tool window and the far right button selects options for how to connect line segments. When you're in drawing mode, you can use two fingers to either pan or pinch and zoom. Most points, lines, and areas either have a fixed orientation or are direction independent. However, some contain arrows or hatchers that do make them directional. For point symbols that have adjustable orientation, such as the water flow arrow, there is a slider at the top of the palette menu for changing the orientation. For directional lines, such as those for floor or ceiling ledges, the direction in which the line is drawn will determine the direction of the hatchers. Tapping the second green button will put you in erase mode. The undo and redo buttons are still available here. The blue eraser button allows you to select what types of objects can be erased. Any object, only points, only lines, 
or only areas. You cannot erase survey shots or stations. The final button with the circle can be repeatedly tapped to make the eraser size small, medium, or large. Tapping the green hand icon will put you in edit mode, which is only available when TopoDroid is in advanced or expert modes. In most cases, if I need to change a drawn element, I'll just delete it with the eraser tool or undo button, and then redraw it. However, the edit mode allows you to make very fine adjustments, but I usually leave that for the desktop cartography software. The main point of TopoDroid is to collect rough sketches while underground, so I leave the refinement for when I'm back in my office. The blue hand button allows you to choose what types of objects can be selected and edited. The circle icon will cycle through small, medium, and large selection areas. Once an object has been selected, other buttons appear or become active. The angle brackets allow you to change points if multiple points have been selected. On the canvas, you can tap and drag to modify a selected anchor point. The line with the arrow allows you to make automatic modifications to a selected point. The second button from the right opens a window that allows you to make other changes to the object depending on the type of drawing element, and the red X will delete the selected object. One good use of edit mode is to change the orientation of the hatchers on a floor or ceiling ledge line if it was originally drawn backwards. Select a point on the line, then choose the first button at the bottom of the sketch items property menu to change the line direction. Cross sections can be drawn in multiple ways. Probably the easiest is to simply hand draw leader lines and put them adjacent to either the plan or profile sketches, as you would on paper. The only limitation of this approach is that you can't benefit from having the guidance of splay shots in really large passage. But I find it faster and easier to archive than using the cross section tools built into TopoDroid. Those built in tools allow you to draw a cross section either at a station or between stations. To draw one at a station, enter edit mode, choose the select station tool, Tap on the station, then open Sketch Item Properties. At the bottom of this window, you can select the direction you want the cross-section to face. All cross-sections in Plan View are vertical, but in Profile View you can choose either Vertical Orientation for Level Passage, or Horizontal Orientation for Pits or Domes. A new sketch window will open with the usual drawing tools, and a new button on the right that will turn on or off the splay shots at the station. To draw a cross-section between stations, you must have the Section Line tool in your line's palette. This is a white dashed line. You then use this tool to draw a line across the passage from left to right in the direction you want to face. In addition to having the option to open a sketch page, there's also a camera button you can use to capture a photo of the passage using the tablet's camera. In the sketch page, you'll see the stations behind and in front of the section location, and you can use the far right button to turn on or off splays for either or both of these stations. If you use the built-in tools for drawing cross sections at or between stations, and you export sketches as SVG files for use in Illustrator, then each cross-section is exported as a separate file, which can be a lot to manage. This is the primary reason I prefer to just draw them on the Plan View sketch page. To get the data or sketches out of TopoDroid and onto a computer for drafting the map, there are a very large number of data and image formats that may be used. In the settings, you can specify a default format for both data and sketches. By choosing these defaults, you can later export a zip file that will contain the properly formatted data as well as plan, profile, and cross-section sketches, survey notes, audio recordings, and photos in one single compressed package. When you're ready to export from the Survey Data menu, open Options and Survey Info. A shortcut is to long tap on the survey from the main menu. From this menu, open Options again and choose Export. You can export just the data or the entire zip file. There are folders within the Android TopoDroid folder for each data and sketch image format, as well as a zip file folder. You can also export individual sketch pages from the Options menu within each sketch page. This concludes the video tutorial series on TopoDroid for the Android operating system. While the software contains a lot of functionality, and at times it isn't intuitive, it doesn't take long to learn with a little practice. Get out there and start using it to survey caves and refer to the built-in user manual if you have any trouble.